It is so rare that we get to see these truly elite grandmasters play the gambits of the past. So when we get a chance to see it, it's very entertaining. Unfortunately, we don't get to see it in the highest level tournaments usually, but there are a lot of Blitz games played online where we get to see the truly elite, in the case of this video today, Wesley So, play ancient gambits. In this case, the King's Gambit. Wesley So has the white pieces. His opponent is Aram Hakobian. This is a Blitz game, casual Blitz game, played on chess.com. Three minutes for each side, but still a very high quality game. Let's begin. Wesley So begins with e4, as you must if you're going to play the King's Gambit. e5 and f4, probably a surprise to his opponent. And his opponent plays the move d5. Now, this is the beginning of what's known as the Falk Beer Counter Gambit, but today it's used as sort of a move order trick. In the past, White would play ef4, knight f, and after knight f3, they would often play d5, which is the modern defense, which kind of sort of a, takes some of the edge off of the king's gambit. The problem is that in this point, White can play with the bishop to c4 line or knight to c3 line, play a lot of different lines. So people started using the Falk Beer counter gambit. So when white takes on d5, black was taking on f4 and transposing to the less interesting modern. But uh, Aram Hakobian, after taking, plays the main line Falk beer with e4. He jumps right in and plays the sharpest line, meaning a gambit with a gambit. Uh, d3 is the move, uh, the main move, and Wesley So plays it. Knight f6, obviously helping to support the e4 pawn. And Wesley So plays uh, not the most common move. He plays queen to e2, uh, trying to take advantage of this pin on the e file. Uh, the main uh, move here is just taking the pawn. And after, say, knight e4, knight f3, bishop to c5 from black, you can see aiming at f2, keeping white from castling kingside, queen e2 pinning the knight, bishop f5, knight c3. And the main line basically ends up in this end game, which is a, a bit better for white. Uh, after queen to e2, the best move for black, it looks to be his bishop to g4, hitting the queen. And after, say, knight f3, the pawn can't take the knight again because of the pin, queen d5. Black is at least equal uh, in this position. However, uh, black in this game takes on d5 with the queen. Wesley plays knight to c3, aiming to take the queen. Now bishop to b4, pinning the knight to the king, so it can't take the queen, but then bishop to d2, relieving the pin. And again, attacking the queen on d5. Bishop takes knight. Bishop takes bishop. And in this position, the computers recommend the move bishop to f5. Not yet committing the king to a square and just getting the pieces out and uh, just developing quickly. Uh, but uh, Aram Hakobian in this position castles. And that allows this move from Wesley. So bishop takes f6. He gives back the two bishops but he wrecks the structure around black's king side in order to do it. Ed3 is an in-between move played by black because it hits the queen, so white has to address that. He can't retreat his bishop from f6. Queen d3, queen d3, bishop d3, and now gf6. So the real question is, can Wesley so take advantage of these king side pawn weaknesses at h7, uh, f6, and f7? Long castles. Knight to d7, and this is the uh, the novelty of the game. Knight to e2. Now, at this level, really only white can win this, but the question is, can black defend? It's quite possible that black can defend this position. Uh, he begins by playing knight to c5, hitting the bishop at d3. The knight goes to g3, and now bishop to g4. What he wants to do is push this rook away from the defense of the bishop, so then Black can take on d3 and give white a pawn weakness too, but Wesley so plays rook to d2 excuse me, to stay in contact with that bishop. Here, rook a to d8, continuing to pile on pressure on d3 would have been a good move. Black plays rook f to e8 instead. Now bishop to f5. That's really the problem with rook f to e8. It, it does sort of allow the exchange of, uh, of these bishops. I mean, it, it would have been that way anyway, but this is a better position for white. Uh, and, and because of that, black really cannot create a weakness in white's position. Only black will have the pawn weaknesses. Bishop takes, knight takes. So now we have not only these weak pawns, but this f5 square is an incredibly important square 
for the rest of the game. White's Knight sitting on that square makes Black's life hell, quite frankly. Black has to do something about that knight. Rook A to D8. One pair of rooks are exchanged. Rook to E1. Wesley threatens rook E7, attacking the pawns along the 7th rank. Knight to E6 blocks that and also attacks the F4 pawn. Wesley defends. And now king to F8. And we see the problem with this knight on F5. It makes it very hard for Black's king to get in the game. He can't go to G7 or E7. So rook to D1 is played. Wesley says, I, I like the pure knight endgame here. I think that's my best chance. Rook takes. King takes. And now knight to G7. Black wants to boot that knight out of F5 so his king can finally get into the game. Uh, if Wesley takes the knight, goes into a pure king endgame, then this position is probably holdable for, for Black. Uh, but after knight e3, Black still can't go to e7, because if he does, then knight to d5 check. It would fork the king and also hit c7 and f6, and white would win material. So he still has to prep it even further. He plays c6 to keep the knight out of d5. King to d2, the king's march towards the center of the board. Uh, Black plays f5 to keep Wesley's knight, uh, excuse me, king out of e4. King d4, and now f6. He uses the other pawn to keep the king out of these key squares. Uh, the problem is these pawns lose all of their flexibility, and Black has to constantly tend to the defense of the f5 pawn. b4 is played. Now, this is a general principle in knight end games. Space is very, very valuable. And the reason is that if you get enough space, you might be able to sacrifice your knight to create a pawn breakthrough that the other side cannot stop. So Wesley gains space on the queen side. King to e6. Now the king is also defending f5. That makes it so the knight can move away if it needs to. c4 continuing to gain space. Knight to e8. And in this position, c5 uh, looks like it would have been strong, keeping the knight out of d6. So the knight goes to c7, span on the queen side. And in this position, the knight looks to be under control. Uh, but instead, Wesley plays a4. Knight to d6. Looks like he's threatening to come into e4. Could be a strong square. Uh, but if c5, knight e4, then g4, undermining the knight, and white would be in very good shape. Uh, but Wesley plays a5, b6 is played. It looks like he could play a6 and set up one of those uh, potential sacrifices. The problem is knight to e8, and the knight comes to c7, and the a6 pawn would actually be in trouble. So Wesley goes ahead and takes on b6. Now c5, bc5 check, king c5. So many of the pawns have been eliminated. And uh, this means that Black can still hold this position. Uh, he's given himself a real chance. He has to play precisely, but it is possible for him to hold this endgame. King to d7, king to b6, trying to say, stay dominant over the king at d7. And in this position, the best idea looks like to be knight to c8 check and king to c5. And Black looks like he might be able to hold this position. Uh, but instead, Black plays the move h5. And this turns out to be a mistake after this incredibly strong move from Grandmaster Wesley So. He plays the move knight to c2. The idea is he wants to go into d4 and double attack the c6 pawn and the f5 pawn, and there's not much black can do to prevent the loss of material. Knight to c4 check. He gives some checks to keep white busy. The knight does go to d4. Knight to e4 check. King to b6. King to d6. And here he can pick. He could take on f5 with check if he wants, but instead Wesley So takes the pawn at c6, leaving him with this passed b pawn. So Black's hope to survive in this position basically me relies on him trying to sacrifice his knight for this pawn and then get rid of these pawns on the other side of the board, maybe with his king, exchange off some pawns. Knight to c3, b5, king to d5, preparing that operation. King e4, king f3, coming in to try to eat these pawns on the king side. So Wesley So decides to go in a different direction. He says, I'm going to try to win black's king side pawns first. So he goes knight to e7, check. King to c4, knight f5, and now knight to b5. He doesn't have to give up the knight to get the pawn now, but now white's knight is very, very active. Goes to g7, attacking the h5 pawn. If uh, black plays h4, then just pawn takes pawn, and this h pawn is way too fast. 
So knight goes to d4, knight takes h5, f5, and again, black has to hope that he can sacrifice his knight and pawn for these three remaining pawns. Knight to g7 puts pressure on f5, king to d5, trying to shoulder out the white king. h4, king to d6, h5, king to e7, coming over, king to c5, knight to e2, attacking the g3 pawn, but allowing knight to f5 check, and uh, black's in big trouble. King f6, h6, he can't take the knight because h7, the pawn would queen. King g6, king moves over, and again, knight g3 doesn't do anything, just knight takes knight, and then this is an easily winning endgame for white. The knight goes to g1, king to e4, knight to e2, king f3, knight c3, and he marches, and again, he can't take the knight because of the pawn. Knight c7, check, king h7, and the kings and the, and the pawns move in together. If this were not a blitz game, black probably would have resigned at this point, and uh, he just marches the pawns, and with a threat of f7 mate, black plays knight to f8, promotes to a queen, capturing, and Wesley so wins. Good to see the king's gambit still has potential in the hands of a great player, at least at these faster time controls, which are becoming more and more popular. Now, even after going over this great game by Wesley So, there is still some great chess you're missing out on to fix that problem. Believe it or not, the key game you're going to want to watch is in this video right here, so be sure to check that one out next for some really great chess.